Hello everyone and welcome back to the World Championships 2017. We're here uh, for the third and fourth playoff. Uh, my name is Matthew Bell and I'm joined here by Michael Cohenum as we bring you coverage for this next match. Yes, we have uh, two Italian duelists dueling for third place. Uh, either way, Italy will take third and fourth place in this tournament. Nevertheless, Marcello Barberi and uh, Forner. Is it Michael Forner? Yes, Michael Forner. Michael Forner. Uh, would prefer third place. Yeah, well, let's, uh, there's still that to play for. I mean, yeah. uh, for these guys, I imagine it, the uh, they might feel a little bit hurt right now that the, the tournament's been ended and there are no European players left in the main event at this point. Yep. Uh, the final will be played by uh, Ryosuke Sujimura and Shenfei Milton uh, a little later today. Uh, it's actually what we were looking at that's really interesting. For the three different tournaments, uh, each different region has kind of dominated that region. Uh, so we've got Asia for the uh, t the TCG or main event. I suppose I could just say OCG in that situation. <laughs> uh, for the Dragon Duel, uh, you've got the Americas continent uh, with uh, Rafael uh, Ma Marino Recht. Sorry, I, c I can't say the German part. Versus Ryan Yu uh, for that final. And Sweden, we got Tut Pup versus Timmy uh, from uh, Sweden and New Zealand, respectively, in Duel Links. Yep. So super interesting stuff. Um, this match, if you guys haven't caught any of the previous matches from either of these two players, is a Wind Witch Invoked versus a True Draco, uh, the Card Demise True Draco build. Yes, Barberi is using the True Draco deck that we saw in the previous round in the top four, uh, whereas Forner is using the Wind Witch deck. And uh, while both of these duelists, I'm sure, were hoping to play against each other in the finals, I'm sure they'll be giving it their all to take third place in this tournament. Yeah, there's uh, still the bragging rights to play for on the plane ride home. Yes. So I think the guys are actually on the same flight as well. <laughs> so. it, it's a ranking that will stay with them for the rest of their lives. Uh, yeah, we'll, we'll be looking forward to getting over to the table. Um, trying to think if there's anything else we can say about these matches, because I believe we saw Michael Forner play yesterday versus the True Draco deck, and it all came down to whether or not he could secure the early Crystal Wing that had the... Uh, the immunities so his opponent couldn't actually deal with the Crystal Wing, and he just pretty much rode that to victory. Uh, that's likely to happen again, because it doesn't look like there are too many answers in Barbary's deck. So this might actually become a game of side decks, depending on whether Michael Fauna opens with this Crystal Wing. Um, because the Invoke deck seems to struggle with the actual um, True Draco side of the deck, but the, the Wind Witches, on the other hand, give you the support to actually handle that. Uh, Barberi, I believe in his side deck he had Kaijus and stuff, right? No, he didn't. He had just uh, a couple of time Vanity awards. Fiends as well. <laughs> yeah, those, those would be pretty good against the Invoke deck. Yeah, it should, uh, it should be an interesting match. I think uh, Michael Forner is technically favored to win game one. Um, but uh, I'd agree. I think he has a better match here than he does against the... Uh, dinosaur deck, which has easy access to dog around the Kaiju, which yeah. he can be used to cr uh, tribute the Crystal Wing Synchro Dragon. Yeah, this is absolutely the match that Michael Forner would have wanted to play. Uh, admittedly, he wanted to play that in the finals, but uh, certainly there's there's still the play of, and both these guys are going to go home with the uh, second through fourth place prize card. So, but, but I'm sure they both wanted the championship title. Yeah, well, they just have to come again next year. Marcello technically qualified twice for this event this year, so <laughs> <laughs> why not? He made it on points and uh, yeah. also for topping the Continental. Winning the WCQ. WCQ. He just did both in one year, why not? We even had time wow. to do some other commentary as well <laughs> for some <laughs> of our events. Uh, but an absolutely spectacular run for both of these duelists in this tournament. Um, third and fourth place is still pretty huge um, in this tournament. Everyone, uh, There's some people that will discuss that the World Championship is such a small event, uh, but at the end of the day, the quality of player, especially at this year's World Championship, have been phenomenal. You had yeah. Billy Brake, Joshua Smith, uh, Shinsuke Hiyama, the former World Champion. There's been uh, a lot of really strong players, and to climb this high up upon them at this point uh, is, is a great achievement. Yeah, you have the best players in the world here. No, <laughs> as the title <laughs> would imply, or you'd hope so. As right? you might guess from the 2017 Yu-Gi-Oh! World Championship. I should just say it all on the logo. Really. <laughs> <laughs> the best players in the world. Yeah, I guess we'll just uh, we'll wait for these guys to 
start. We hope you guys are enjoying the World Celebration events as well, back home, that are taking place over this weekend. This is the first year that's happening, so that's a very cool event. Yeah, to give you guys a little bit of a background of how we, uh, why we switched to this sort of system, is we had this super interesting thing where um, you'd run the World Championships in one region, and uh, only one region would really benefit from it. And what would happen is all the players would they'd come to your event, which would be great, and then the stores were kind of sad because all their players went... And so there was no Yu-Gi-Oh in those stores over the weekend. It's like the biggest weekend for Yu-Gi-Oh. And we actually wanted to make it so more duelists had access to the World Championship celebration stuff that we do at the events. And so we wanted to move that more to your local store so you could go there, turn on the live stream, have some games, get a chance to win some of the stuff you would have won at the World Championships. And we could get it out to everybody, everywhere this time. But that's all I'm going to say about that. You guys can probably net deck some of these decks for your events later. But if you want to see how they're played, let's get started. Both players scout their opening hands to consider their initial play. Michael to start. Foreigner starts out with Alistair the Invoker. That's going to let him search his deck for an invocation and get the engine started. Uh, the thing I really like about this invocation uh, is just a way that you keep this constant stream of pressure because you can just, uh, after you resolve the invocation, uh, banish the Alistair, you can uh, return the invocation and get the Alistair back to your hand. Um, and you can just keep doing this cycling of different fusion monsters. Okay, he mm. gets rid of, I think that was... That's Ice Bell. Ice Bell. Uh, not Ice Bell, sorry, that's uh, Snow Bell. The one of. Okay, so we're not going to be seeing the Crystal Wing this game. Exactly, that's exactly what that means. So he is now solely reliant on the invoked portion of his deck. He must not have opened with Wind Witch Ice Bell. If he had, we might have seen the Crystal Wing Synchro Dragon here instead. Um, instead, he's going to have to lean on the invoked, Ragin. That would be interesting. I imagine Marcello is pretty happy to see that. In fact, these two duelists played in Swiss yesterday, I believe, in the final round, and their match actually ended in a draw. So we'll see if the uh, pre the last game's experience has helped either of these duelists come up with a game plan to get through. So that's invoked uh, Raijin, uh, with the effect to be able to flip monsters down at, as a quick effect uh, into face down defense position. Very disruptive card, and pretty big on the defense as well. Marcello goes for his Pot of Desires. Banish is the top 10 cards of his deck. And let's see if Warner has the... Yep. He does. <laughs> Ash Blossom and Joyous Spring negates Pot of Desires. We're seeing that a lot on Barbary's side. We <laughs> saw it in the last feature match as well. Oh, really? <laughs> in, in the previous round, he banished 10 cards and then lost out to Ash Blossom. I didn't actually get to uh, catch the last feature match right. because I was in the pits uh, basically <laughs> reporting all the results so you guys could uh, see what was going on for the rest of the tournament. So, <laughs> so uh, you Don't worry, you get to see it here. I've, I've missed apparently so many amazing matches this weekend as a, as a, as a result, uh, including a balance of judgment for seven cards. <laughs> <laughs> that was, that's probably my favorite. As one of those players that really appreciates Chain Burn, I know everyone hates it. I, I'm quite sad I missed that feature. <laughs> Disciples of the Cure Craco Phoenix on Burberry's field. He sets three back rows and then passes without much going on. Foreigner activates Magical Meltdown. He wants to search for Alistair. Let's see if Burberry lets him. He does. Hmm. I'm trying to think of what uh, Marcello could have set, but he's got quite a few different live back row cards that he could have been going with. So it's a little bit difficult to tell. Yeah, I mean, they could be true king or true Draco trap cards. Yeah, if they're true Draco trap cards, then he has a lot of life plays available to him this turn, providing he has one tribute monster. That's the key. He needs the monster. But he's set for play pot designers. Ragin yeah. switches into attack position and attacks directly along with Alistair. Oh, these attacks are going to connect. Okay, that looks like it. Marcello probably didn't open spectacularly then. Uh, it looks pretty weak for him. I mean, he played Disciples of the Crew Draco Phoenix and did nothing with it. So if yeah. that's any indication of how strong his hand is, he, this is a bit of a struggle for him. Yeah, I mean, if... Well, the Raijin uh, the right uh, causes a few problems because if, if you'd use the Trap Guard, tribute it, uh, use its effect to Tribute Summon uh, Dynamite Knight, uh, the Raijin would have been able to flip down the Dynamite Knight, but then the Trap Guard could then... If he would attribute the trap guard, he would have been able to destroy the Raijin. So, yeah. no, I think uh, Marcello's hand is just... He, he needs the monster is the key. I mean, Dynamite Knight also would have activated if he tried to put it face down. Yeah, so he would have then been able to, to go places with that. Okay, yeah, he's going to start lowering his opponent's monster's attack to take out the Magical Meltdown. That really implies that Marcello's hand is 
Ah, yeah, he's he's doing everything he can to dig here. He needs to yeah. get some he needs to get some gas. It's pretty desperate. Drew Draco Heretic, he draws one more card. He needs a monster. He can turn this around if he just picks up a monster. Yeah, it's one of the weaknesses to the card of the Mize variant. It only plays like how many monsters has he got there? He has eight. Eight monsters. Okay. So just under a one in what's that? One in four? Uh, one in five. One in five. It's a forty card deck, I believe, he's playing. It is exactly a forty card deck. Oh yeah. What? <laughs> uh yeah, so he's yeah, here we go. Okay, now he's got the he's hey, he got a monster whose effect gets more monsters. So that's a pretty good that's one to pick up. Yeah, that's a very good one, uh, good uh, way for him to start getting back into this game. Uh, he's reminded he is not allowed to move kings to spell and crap card zone of his face down cards. Not particularly relevant in this tournament, but it's as no. something that's going to be going forward. Um, it's a definite uh, a definite no no to start moving your cards around. Yes. So Crew Draco Apocalypse's effect destroys the Rage Inn, and then an attack from Majesty Maiden takes down Alistair. Yeah, Michael still has that invocation that he picked up on turn one. So Michael has, and he hasn't really been committing a whole bunch of cards to the to the field, uh, just the di direct attacks. So he's got some room here. Although the um, Majesty Maiden will be able to self, uh, well, offer Marcello an additional option as soon as Michael tries to play anything. And here comes the invocation, and yeah, Marcello immediately taps the Maiden. I think we'll see him get Masterpiece. That seems likely. Depending on his face down cards, he may prefer Dynamite. Yeah, Dynamite could be pretty good for more more digging here, or, or at least setting up the True King return after he's got a, a few True Dracos, and then he can start really dragging the match out, as we saw yesterday. This uh, True Draco deck really able to pop up really horrible tar pit for players to crawl through and really makes it a war of attrition. You can see from here which monster he did add to his hand, but I suspect we will find out very shortly when he summons it. And okay, we'll see this invocation is going to banish the Raijin and the Alistair to summon Raijin number two. And Invocation going back into the deck, Alistair coming back to the hand. The Alistair and Invocation combo is a pretty interesting package. Yeah, absolutely. Um, as we said a little bit earlier, it just gives you such a uh, great flow of monsters every turn uh, yeah. to keep pressuring your opponent. And they're not small either. All of the Invoked monsters are pretty... Uh, impressive in their uh, in their own regard, and they, they have very diverse effects as well, so they're relevant in many situations. Oh, we are going to see skill drain though, and that's going to be able to shut uh, Michael off of that part of his engine. Uh, with Alistair getting negated, he's not going to be able to get his invocation search. Uh, Forner could gain the effect of rage in. He could, uh, but he chose not to. Yeah, he, pro he probably doesn't need to because he has a stronger monster already. Uh, although he could chain it actually to Alistair to use his effect, can he? Yeah, absolutely. He flips his Alistair down. He could have then uh, took the search if he wanted it, but he's elected not to. Does Raging lets you target your own monsters, right? Uh, I'll quickly double check that. Yeah. Um, the attack on him is 22 or 24? It is 2200 20 attack, 2400 defense. All right, that's what I was remembering. Okay, yeah, he, oh so he didn't flip his own monster down because then he wouldn't have been able to attack over the Maiden uh, because uh, her attack is 2300. Oh, Cosmic Cycling going to take out the True King return. Marcello was already... Okay, so we do know he had added another monster and now he has a Continuous Spell, Continuous Trap and a monster's hand, so he definitely got some plays to make. Corner is no longer too concerned about the skill drain now that he has the dominating field. That's likely to change very quickly though, because we know Marcello added a monster, and that whichever monster he added would immediately be bigger than anything Michael has in play. That's true. If Forner does have another Alistair in his hand, however, he can increase Ragin's attack points by discarding it. That's true. Uh, I'm not sure what's in his hand, but that's a possibility, and that 
could. Oh, he does have access to two Alistair's because he played the Magical Meltdown a little earlier, didn't he? And he had Alistair on turn one before the Meltdown, so he does have the second Alistair. I think you're correct. This, these are things that are probably easier to remember when you're actually playing. Yeah. Uh, the game. And there we go, we're going to see Dynamite Knight. So I guess that's the card he searched for. He tributes True King's Return. But it's also possible Masterpiece is just gone because he desired this game. That's very true as well. And yeah, true, uh, true Draco Heritage is going to add an additional card. And now off the top, that's a very good card to add. The Pot of Desires, it's, this card, it, whenever your deck can support it, is always extremely strong. Uh, it's just in recent years and formats, of course, with the game changing, so you, you need to depend on your special summons. Players can't really afford the drawbacks. Um, I think Marcello just added Card of Demise to his hand as well, so he's going to just start Nitro boosting his, uh, his resources. He uh, attacks Alistair to destroy it. And if you're right, and that was in fact a card of demise, he's bound to play it. He draws three more cards from his deck since his hand is currently empty. And he has access to an extra normal summon if he does draw another true Draco. And he's got three, uh, two spell and trap zones available to set cards. Oh, Upstar Goblin. Iconic and diagram. <laughs> wow, it's all just coming straight out of the deck now. He, from the <laughs> slow start Marcello had, I imagine he's actually pretty lucky that Michael uh, wasn't able to really press out very hard in the opening stages of this game. Yeah. But uh, that generally seems to be the trend of a lot of uh, top competitive decks. Is uh, once it, as soon as they get going, they're very, they're very, very secure. Um, as long as you get out of the early game. Yeah. Diagram destroys Pride Desires since he doesn't want to banish another ten cards. Yeah, I imagine actually at this point he'd be running extremely long cards if he did that. He uh, definitely is. Um, he uses Disciples of the Crew Draco Phoenix. Gets to use it to send three cards back and draw one. Foreigner's Field is completely empty. And he's got a skill drain to contend with. Yeah, this, this won't be easy for him. The Barry discards uh, Crew Draco Apocalypse in his end phase due to the effect of Card of Demise. Yeah, Michael looks uh, pretty jammed there. And after committing the Cosmic Cyclone to the True King's return as well, it may he implied he was actually more comfortable with this skill drain than maybe he is. Let's quickly uh, scout the graveyard. And he's going to go push out with Invocation. Yeah, with the uh, Skill Drain face up though, uh, that Invocation, I'm just trying to think of what he could be. Whatever he takes will have no effect, so there's really not much he can do. What, what's his uh, strongest. Uh, I'm just trying to remember which uh, which of the invokes are. Uh oh, he it goes for a Purgatrio, but Purgatrio won't gain any attack points. No, he doesn't run the Earth one. It looks like. Yeah, the that would have been the strongest. Yeah, that's that one's uh, pretty gigantic. Burger Trio has 2,300 attack points. I think he still has an Alistair in hand, right? Yeah, if he played the Invocation, he's probably uh, picked the Alistair back up. Nevertheless, he is not in good shape. No, he made the he made the commitment with his uh, Cosmic Cyclone, and uh, to, to be fair, he was taken out of True King Return, which would have put him in the tar pit situation we saw him in yesterday, uh, just constantly trying to deal with these recurring uh, True Draco monsters. But by leaving the skill drain, he's kind of prevented himself from actually advancing his, uh, his field very easily. Imperial Order coming up from Michael. And Cosmic Cyclone, chained by Barbary, gives up a thousand life points to banish Imperial Order from the duel. So Marcello is going to be free to use his spell cards this turn. Let's see where he goes from here. He 
probably use the Imperial Order on the activation of the Diagrams effect. Yeah, most likely. Yeah, looks like it. Yeah, he was using Diagrams to destroy. So he destroys the True Draco Heritage, and now gets a monster from his deck. Well, any True Draco or True King card from his deck. We're likely to see a monster here. Yeah, uh, Michael's life points are starting to get quite low. I, t I should say over half isn't low, but in this particular format, in this day and age, it is pretty low. <laughs> this, uh, Disciples of the True Draco Phoenix actually is activated, so he gets to draw one card. Yeah, my cello is extremely comfortable right here. Effects tribute his trap. Yep, and then he's got 5,000. Yes, Dynamite tribute summon by tributing True King's Return. True King's Return activates, destroying Purgatrio, and then two direct attacks from Dynamite, the True Draco Fighter, ends the duel by dealing 5,000 points of damage. Yep, that's uh, that's pretty rough for Michael, uh, After especially after his beginning. Uh, he just had Marcello was very, very slow and was absolutely desperately trying to dig into his deck to get going. Michael on the uh, Michael Forner on the other hand, he just wasn't able to take advantage of that, and the game went on a little bit too long. And then he was forced to commit his Cosmic Cyclone to either True King Return or Skill Drain. He chose to return, and it just didn't pay out for him. So then prevented him from doing anything else for the rest of the game. Yeah, act, uh, starting with Wind Witch Snowbell in your opening hand is also never really good, uh, and not starting with Wind Witch Ice Bell is even worse. So he Forner definitely did not have the ideal hand. Especially in this matchup, where Crystal Wing Synchro Dragon, protected by the lingering effects of the Wind Witch monsters, is so powerful. Yeah, it would have, uh, it could have potentially been enough to uh, allow Michael to win, especially during the slow start, because the Crystal Wing also just hits you for 3,000 damage. It's so huge. Um, but should have, would have, could have, Michael's going to have to rethink this, because now Marcello gets a chance to get into his side deck uh, in order to prepare for any potential start. Um, so it should be pretty interesting. But uh, Michael is playing three copies of Mass Restrict uh, to stop the uh, True Draco deck from yes. getting getting off the ground. So that could be a problem for Marcello, giving him more things that he has to spread his spell and trap removal over. Well, he also main decked Zombie World, along with three copies of Set Rotation, to get it. Uh, Zombie World is basically the same thing as Mask of Restrict. Yeah, so that's like the fourth copy uh, in this case. Um, it's like the seventh copy. If you count the set rotations, the oh search yeah. for it. And the terraformings. Oh, that's true, too. It's like he has uh, nine copies, if you count the two terraformings. <laughs> <laughs> that's a lot of, uh, a lot of zombie world. Um, yeah. Yeah, that's Marcello actually winning an unfavorable uh, matchup uh, for game one, so he must be feeling pretty great now. When you play something like this, it's a little bit out of the uh, out of the left field. You really, really want to be winning these game ones. And the players will just uh, get prepared to play the next round. I think it actually will get easier for Forner though in the second duel now that he can put in all those mask of restricts. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, uh, as well as Zafi on the Time Lord, which is very powerful against Crew Draco. He yeah, has three copies of that. Yeah, he really has committed hard on to the uh, Zafion, hasn't he? Yeah. Um, being able to sweep away all of your opponent's uh, spells and traps. Very, very powerful, especially for a deck that needs to commit them because of Card of Demise. Exactly. It's interesting because Michael Forner probably came prepared to play against Drew Draco. I'm not sure where Cello Barberi came prepared to play against straight Wind Witch. I I know he would have uh, he would have practiced this bad matchup for the WCQs. I'm not sure how much of his time he would have probably tested the invoke deck because of its success uh, throughout the WCQ season, uh, just to see what it was worth. And he he's obviously come to the conclusion that the uh, True Deco Demise build was the best deck for this tournament. So he he knows the fundamentals of the invoke deck. I wouldn't put that past him. The duelists are shuffling up in what could be their final duel of the tournament. Final duel of the season. Although, to be fair, this season does start again next weekend but <laughs> uh, for the 2017-2018 season. I'm sorry. 
Okay, so, okay sorry guys, I just got some news. Uh, they agreed to randomly side deck 15 cards for this match, and the judges actually approved it, so they don't know what they've side decked in. They're not, they're not actually taking this match seriously. Ha! Huh, kind of... Kind of would have expected, uh, you know, they really won the third place, but they're just, uh, they're just having fun. Like, as I said, these guys are uh, on the same plane home, so I guess that's just a case of they have no idea what's going on. But now and Michael will get to search through his deck um, and then see all the cards. And you see, look at his face. <laughs> look at his face there when he just went for his deck. Oh, wow. I guess uh, if they've um, completely randomly side decked, he has no idea what he's taken out. I'm speechless. For World Championship. <laughs> <laughs> he's just like, want to randomly side deck? Sh sure. Huh. I kind of feel like I was too invested in this match now. <laughs> All right. It, in any case, Foreigner summons Alistair. <laughs> he activates its effect, but loses out to Ash Blossom in Joyous Spring. And Michael going to... Set two cards and pass it back to Marcello. I think I saw a card of the Mize, Imperial Order in Marcello's hand, and Pot of uh, Pot of Desire is going to add two additional cards, assuming Michael doesn't have the Ash Blossom. And he does. <laughs> every time. Every this time. Is, this is Marcello Barberi's fate in every duel. Uh, I mean, see the little Ash Blossom <laughs> running off with every pot of desires that someone has. Ash Blossom and Joy Spring is a very popular card in this tournament, but I'm a little surprised by how much I'm seeing it hit pot of desires. Very specifically. <laughs> oh, they, um, Michael does have his Mask of Restricts in his deck, and there's the card of the Mize come down for uh, Marcello. Foreigner can only activate one Ash Blossom per turn, so uh, Barberi knows that this card of Demise will resolve. He draws three cards. I think he drew two. Was and it two? Yeah. Maybe he drew... Maybe it was three? Um, one, two, three, four. Pot Desires. That'd be five, but he went second. You might probably, either way, in the end phase, he's left with Vanity's Fiend in his hand and is forced to discard it. Yeah, with the uh, Mask Restrict in play, uh, he's not going to be making any tribute summons. No, and that's that's difficult because one of the ways that this deck destroys spell and trap cards is by tribute summoning the crew Dracos, tributing a spell card. But yeah. it cannot be done with Mask Restrict on the field. So some of your cards that actually could destroy trap cards can't destroy Mask Restrict. Yeah, I mean, that's uh, it's one of those super awkward things where you, depending on your spell and trap removal uh, to be part of your natural mechanics, but when you can't access them, it leaves you in this kind of awkward position where because you probably have gone really light on your other spell and trap removal as a result because your deck is already doing that just by functioning. Uh, so that could be leaving Marcello just uh, sitting there until he draws a Cosmic Cyclone. Yep. So Forner summons Alistair, uses its effect to get Invocation, and now Invocation hits the field, but Imperial Order will negate it. Um, Michael quickly grabs his card. Cosmic Forner. Cyclone. Chains Cosmic Cyclone pays a thousand life points to banish Imperial Order. Since it's a continuous trap card and it now is off the field, the invocation will resolve successfully. And Purgatrio, the likely. Oh no, he's going to go for his opponent's graveyard to have a quick check. And. Macabre, it looks like. Oh, oh he took out his opponent's uh, Ash Blossom. Um, so he's going to then make a pr uh, some Purgatrio. Purgatrio. He's going to gain a few attack points. What was that? 2, 4, 6, eight. Yeah, an additional 600 attack points, and then he's going to have piercing. Gains. Yeah, you're right. It's 200 for each card your opponent controls. And he's on 2300 base, right? Uh, it is. 2300 attack, 2000 defense points. Oh, we just got a... Uh Result from Duel Links, which was the third and fourth playoff, uh, Samson wins that match. So he is the third place Duel Links competitor. Yes, uh, congratulations to him. Very well played. 
Uh, so Barberry flips Drew King's return, and Drew Draco Apocalypse uses the Apocalypse to destroy the return, and uses the return's effect to thereby destroy Perfect Trio. That's a lot of cards to to essentially throw away to get this Perfect Trio it out of It really is, but Perfect Trio was pretty important to get rid of. Absolutely, yeah. Michael uh, still having access to invocations, though, so he's going to be able to just, uh, especially since he has another Ash Blossom in his own graveyard, he can summon another Perfect Trio on the following turn. Marcello laughing, he probably drew one of those wacky side deck cards that he wasn't expecting to be in his deck. Uh, good sportsmanship, at least uh, even though the, the guys can't play for the championship, uh, they're having fun with you, which is at the end of the day what it's all about. It is. Fornares summons another Alistair, searches for another invocation, activates it to destroy the Alistair, uh, banish rather, Alistair, along with, looks like a fire monster, probably it's the Purgatrio. No, that's it, the Ash Blossom. Uh, an Ash Blossom, okay. Summon another Purgatrio. This one will have 2,700 attack and still pierces. And if Barbaria was afraid of Purgatrio before, there's no reason he wouldn't be now. Yeah, he, he committed quite a few resources just to get it out of play, so yeah. you know he it was definitely on his mind. The set card from Marcello has to be a hand trap, right? Uh, probably. I can't imagine what else it would be. He had, he had, yeah, yeah Ash it's Blossom. an Ash Blossom. He probably just said it uh, because... He had nothing else to do. Yeah, it was e either he was going to lose it to Card of Demise, or he wanted to draw an extra card with Card of Demise. I don't remember when he said it, but it was definitely one of the two. Yeah. And, of course, with the uh, Mask Restrict in play, he was just going to... It's either just letting direct attacks through, or yeah. or not in this case. So, uh, Purgatrio pierces through it. It does absorb some of the damage, 1,800 points. Uh, but then Alistair will attack directly, and Barberi appears to be in dire straits. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised to see Marcello picking up his cards soon, but then he's pulled himself out of worse situations. He activates terraforming. Oh, that's uh, that's that's pretty nice. Uh, he's gonna be able to get his uh. If it's nice if he didn't side out his Dragonic Diagram. He does have his Diagram, <laughs> which will allow him to... Uh, well, actually, I'm trying to think of what he could do here. Um, if he destroys his Apocalypse, he can take out a monster and search for a true Draco uh, card, but he still can't actually summon any of his uh That's true, Dracos. but he can destroy the Apocalypse and maybe get Heritage to draw a card and hope oh. for the best. But Twin Twisters is going to come down. Uh, he'll probably destroy only... Oh, he takes nope. them by five. He takes down the Apocalypse and the Diagram. I'm a little surprised about that. <laughs> it's like, are you sure you don't want to destroy my Alistair? And then the Apocalypse will destroy Perfect Trio. Yeah, but we know Michael's just going to have another Invocation, and he's playing... He's not playing any more copies of uh, Perfect Trio. Barbarian ends his turn with a completely clear field. Forner summons another Alistair to grab another Invocation from his deck. And we're going to see some more Dance Magic Dance as these uh, Alistairs get turned into other magical creations. Invocation is resolving. And Raijin going to be the fusion monster of choice. Yep, 3200 points going towards Marcello. Uh, meaning the remaining attack points on Michael Fauna's field is going to be enough to close out the duel if Marcello doesn't do anything, but he just can't play the game right now because of this uh, Mask of Restrict. He just ends his turn and waits for Fauna to finish him off. And we're going to game three. Third and final duel. I wonder if they'll take this one more seriously. <laughs> I don't well, know. I don't think so. Like, why? Like, when uh, if Marcello was serious about winning, he would have never have agreed to that. So... We'll we'll have to wait and see how they uh how how these guys decide to he's going for a stack and look he just this is the face of someone surprised. That's, that's one of the craziest things I've seen. Well, definitely this weekend. Uh, so what are your thoughts on the final match then? Uh, is can we make any kind of predictions if they're if they're going to just side deck randomly? The final duel of uh, this match? Yeah, this one. That's I don't know. All bets are <laughs> off. <laughs> 
Uh, yeah. Um, I guess we just kind of have to wait and see what uh, what comes up. Uh, based on their side decking, we we have no way of knowing if they're going to take it, uh, if they're going to be serious or not. Um, we'll talk a little bit about Samsung. Congratulations to him making third place on uh, Dual Links. Yeah. That was uh, pretty cool. I'm just trying to remember who his opponent would have been in that bracket. Uh, it would have been the player from Indonesia, but I have forgotten his name. Uh, Silent something. It's on one of these things somewhere. Oh, it's right here. Yes, Silent Loft. Yeah, winning over, winning over Silent Loft. All right. Uh, even though I don't know what they did with their side decks in that <laughs> duel, uh, I will say that Mask of Restrict actually proved to be a pretty critical card, and that was a side deck card. Yep, it, it uh, was in there. Mask of Restrict, that's primarily its entire function is to stop the True Draco player from yeah. actually getting into the game. And Marcello was, again, desperately just trying to find a way to play any of his cards and making really unfavorable uh, trades of his cards. And, yeah, he was in, uh, to be fair, he was in a position where he had to throw away cards to prevent himself just getting obliterated anyway. Right. So it's like, Either I lose or I make really bad exchanges. And he's like, well, I'm going to make the bad exchanges and try and make the best of this awful situation. Uh, but in the end, it wasn't actually enough. He just gets runs out, run over anyway because then eventually he runs out of things to do. And that's all she wrote. Uh, going into the final match, uh, Marcello gets to choose to go first. I imagine he's going to take the first point, uh, first turn because he doesn't want his opponent to open with the crystal wing. And he also doesn't want his opponent to open with Mask of Restrict before he can tribute summon a monster. Yep. Uh, <laughs> so uh, it's, it's definitely to his advantage to choose to go first. It's very much in his interest to yeah. uh, <laughs> to go first. <laughs> but will he do what's in his interest? It, it, again, at this point, we have no idea. We'll just have to wait and see. One would assume. I'll tell you one thing, I, uh, a match I am super looking forward to seeing will be Raphael versus Ryan Yu in the Dragon Duel final a little bit later. I'm Raphael, apparently, uh, he was talking to um, his translator, and his translator asked him, oh, in the final, which would you be more worried about playing against the mirror match, which is a true Draco mirror match, or a uh, or chain burn? And he said, I'm not worried about burn at all. Oh, yeah? And I was <laughs> like, that's pretty confident. I think actually, uh, I'm not sure, you, uh, I'd have to check this, but I think Raphael actually beat Ryan in the Swiss. Um, <laughs> but so he's going for a repeat. I, I very rarely hear people say, yeah, I'm hoping for a burn match. Yeah. I'm totally ready for this. I am not worried at all. Pretty strong words. <laughs> all right, third and final duel is underway. And Marcello Bavaria uses terraforming to search for a Dragonic Diagram. I also saw in Marcello's hand, Time Lord... Uh, Zafion, um, interesting, uh, yeah, probably makes sense. Um, we'll see how Ma Marcello chooses to set up. Zafion can get rid of Mask of Restrict, right? I wasn't sure uh, off the top of my head if it was just set cards or if it's uh, all spells and traps. All spells and traps, yeah. So, yeah, there's a, it can clear out the Mask of Restrict. Yes, it's at the end of the battle phase of this card battle. Shuffle all spells and traps your opponent controls into the deck. Yeah, that's additional spell and trap removal that he doesn't need to tribute something yeah. for. Uh, it's very a strong, uh, very strong card for him in this match then. Well, post-side deck uh, match. Oh, and there it is. Normal summons Zafian can be summoned without tribute as long as you control no monsters. He sets two cards and then uses Card of Demise. And as long as he didn't draw any monsters. But he could have drew a combination with one of the spells that gives him an extra normal tribute That's summon. That's true. So he picked up three cards. One of them was part of uh, Duality, which he is going to use. Uh, I'm sure as, m as much as he would love that Ash Blossom and Joyous Spring... Not good here. He cannot take it because if he does, he will discard it in the end phase due to the effect of card demise. He goes for True King's Return, so that probably means in his... That definitely confirms in his hand he has some True Draco monsters. So uh, well, not uh, not necessarily because he's going to discard his hand in the end phase. Yeah, but if he sets a True King's Return, he can then get those monsters out of the graveyard. Well, that could be. That's true. Otherwise, the card of demise would have been super tempting for the additional resources on the following turn. Oh, and Pot of Desire as well. Okay, he had uh, all the draw cards this game. It's not getting hit by an Ash Blossom and Joyous Spring for once. He yeah. actually gets to draw two cards this time. Actually resolves Pot of Desire as well.
Michael just forced to sit back and uh, watch. And we're going to see Vanity Fiend discarded. That's, uh, in the end phase, do the effect of Card of Demise. I would guess so. But after just drawing the two cards from Pot of Desires as well, I would have thought he would have definitely had some more spells or traps to set. What did he just... How did he discard the... Oh, he's destroying it from his hand with the oh, diagram. Shikonic diagram to search his deck. Yeah, of course. Okay, <laughs> this is not the end phase, yeah. yeah this okay, he didn't point to the card, so it was unclear he was activating the effect, but he obviously communicated it to Forner, so he knows what he's doing. Yeah, we actually don't have live, uh, live voice feeds to the table, so uh, we've got a little bit of uh, Yu-Gi-Oh! miming going on that we're trying to interpret for you guys. So Disciples of the True Draco Phoenix for Merc Shello Barberi. And he activates it. Yeah, which means he could be considering uh, using his extra, his extra normal summon. Mm, does he choose to... Yep, he goes for the two tributes, uh, Masterpiece, Spell, and Monster Effect Immunity, and he gets a draw card for the uh, Zafion. It's pretty... Uh, Zafion's really strong. Yeah. He didn't even get to use its effect, and he managed to draw a card with it. It's... Because uh, of the Descent to the Graveyard effect. Yeah, it's uh, been one of the breakout cards for this weekend from the side deck. Uh, for sure. We never saw any Time Lords, and then we've... I've for example, I saw in Joshua Smith, admittedly his record wasn't amazing this weekend. He had quite a few Time Lords, uh, not even just Zafion, uh, in there. Uh, Kameon was seeing some play also. Yes. And of course, Time Mated. Uh, so, True Draco Heritage gets activated. Uh, he tr uses an extra normal summon to tribute summon Dynamite by ge getting rid of True King's return. Then, since he tributed a spell and a trap card this turn, he gets to use the Heritage to draw two. Uh, and then he sets everything and has nothing to discard with Card of Demise. So this was actually an amazing opening for Marcello Barberi. Yeah, he just has all the draw cards and just gets himself uh, an almost perfect setup there. Uh, not sure uh, what Michael's going to be doing to get out of here because uh, Masterpiece... Oh, it's okay, set rotation. Set rotation, all right. I mean, Masterpiece is already used and accomplished what he needed it to do. Yeah, he's already got the. He's already managed to deploy it and get his setup. Zombie World can tr stop tribute summons, but again, you know, the tribute summon monsters are already on the field. Yeah, and Masterpiece can just clear it anyway. That um, too. But Michael might have a plan here. Yeah, he's uh, more interested in getting his own magical meltdown. And he gives Marcello a closed forest. All right, so that's going to let him go get his Alistair and then follow it up with Invocation. Um, and his opponent does have a Dark Monster in his graveyard. And we just uh, heard that there's just a little over two minutes on this round left, and we can see the timer on the screen there for you guys. Not much going on for Forner. Yeah, this is a really awkward situation to be in. Um, yeah, he'll summon the Alistair. Grabs an invocation from his deck with its effect. Doesn't have an answer to Masterpiece, though, from what, it, from those cards alone, at least. No, even if he fusion summons, um, he doesn't really have an answer for. The, he doesn't have an answer for, it, for the Masterpiece because it will just clear away anything that threatens it. It's one of the reasons the card is so obnoxious. Yes. Okay, Wonder One. Wonder One's good, but Barberry could use Masterpiece to just destroy the um, Alistair in order to avoid Forner drawing two cards. Alistair in the Grave is basically the same as Alistair on the field, since it would be banished either way by invocation, but it might be worth it just to get rid of the Wonder Wand. Yeah, I'm not sure. I mean, the, the Wonder Wand doesn't fret. The Wonder Wand uh, and the Alistair doesn't threaten you in any way. So that is true. And Barberi appears to agree as he's letting Forner draw the two cards, uh, reserving his masterpiece's effect to destroy something more relevant. Yeah, well, because of the. Uh, we don't know what his other face down cards are. I imagine he's. Uh, the only thing he's going to take out is something that's guaranteed to threaten his masterpiece. Yes. 
Uh, he can just sit back and wait. Yeah. The only thing he would have to worry about is Horner drawing something like a Kaiju that gets rid of the Masterpiece before he has the chance to activate its effect. Oh, interesting. He's going to summon Invoked Kokaitis. Uh, who cannot be destroyed by card effects. I can't remember the defense. It's I think it's 2900, but when yeah, we get up. It was north of I knew it was north of 28. Yeah, it's 1800 attack, 2900 defense points. Ah, so it's still 50 defense points uh, weaker than the uh, Masterpiece. Right, so it really doesn't do much for him. That is time in the round. Once again, it is time in the round. Okay, and... Go into your three turn in a match procedure. If you have questions, please ask your judge. Okay, and they're going to end a match procedure. And this uh, heavily favors Martello since he's already managed to set up on his first turn, so he'll he'll get the battle phases he needs to make the most of this. Yes, then the Kytus really doesn't do anything. No. You know, just absorb an attack, it looks like. He just kind of sits there and looks scary. Yeah. Warner's definitely going to set more than one card. Otherwise, he'll just get picked off by Masterpiece, and he'll be left with nothing on uh, Barbaro's turn. Yeah, and then Barbaro will just uh, steamroll him. And it looks like that might happen anyway. He does set the two. Oh, Barbaro does not. I think Barbaro has some continuous cards in the graveyard, but I guess he's saving them. Yeah, there's at least one in there. Yeah, there might only be one, actually. Oh, that would explain why he didn't go in the end phase. Oh, there's Mask of Strict. Oh, but, he, but he tribute summoned two monsters. He tributed... Oh, yeah, so he... he should have at least two. Yeah, because he summoned uh, Masterpiece and... Dynamite on his field. Dynamite. Well, Mask of Restrict is flipped. It's a little late, unfortunately. It would have been great if Michael was uh, going first this game, but... Uh that's not the case. Set rotation would have been way better going first as well. So uh, this definitely hurt him. Yeah, almost everything about Michael's hand would have been great if yeah. the uh, <laughs> torn order was reversed. Mask Restrict being taken out. Uh, Marcello probably can st uh, looking for a True Draker. Oh no, he's going to go... Oh, Monarch the Monarch Storm, Storm fourth. fourth. Since Monarch, the Monarch Storm fourth does not target, he can tribute... He invoked Kokaitis to summon Dynamite Knight. Uh, and he now has uh, 7,950 damage on the table. <laughs> 50 short of what he actually needs. He's trying to see if the Close Forest will give any attack points to his, uh, to his monsters. I don't think it does. It's only beasts, right? I think so. Or it might... It might increase all of them, but it's based on the beasts in the graveyard. Let me see. Let's, we'll get that for you. All beast type monsters you control gain 100 attack points for each monster in your graveyard. So ah, okay. Michael Fauna going down to 50 life points. He's going to need the skill of the Pharaoh if he's going to get out of this one. He will. Because <laughs> I actually have no idea how he does it if he's got if he's got the answer. This is as uh, desperate a situation as one could be in. 50 life points to the full 8,000. Staring down an incredible Eight boss monster. Eight cards against none. All right, so you want to start with Cards of Sanctity. Uh, <laughs> draw six cards and then consider if you've got a chance. Yes. Maybe Card of Demise, but unfortunately that's only in Barbary's deck. Uh, yeah, okay, so we're going to see a uh, normal summon Invocation. There it is. He'll use Wonder oh. Wand. Yeah, Wonder Wand for more cards. That's pretty good. It's pretty outmaxed right now. Shoe King's Return activates. And True Draco, Draco Apocalypse. Oops. He might destroy the True King's Return to destroy the Alistair, which would take the Wonder Wand down with it. 
depriving Foreigner of the two cards he wants to draw. While also giving Masterpiece more ammunition to work with. Yes, and preserving Masterpiece's effect to still use during the opponent's turn. Alright, he'll destroy the Crew Graco Heritage with the uh, Crew Graco Apocalypse. Essentially the same idea. He just destroys the Wonder Wand itself instead of the Alistair. Yeah, well the Alistair is just now a liability in attack mode. That's um, true. As well. But we know uh, Michael has the invocation, so he's going to be forced to play it. And well, he can get Purgatrio, so I guess he he has to take out Apocalypse uh, if he wants to go down this line. And one of the face down cards, I guess. Why Apocalypse? Uh, because if he doesn't, uh, the Purgatrio, if it tries to make any attacks, will just get well, it, was it was used already this turn. Oh, oh yeah, Apocalypse. of course it was. Yeah. So, so he'll uh, Twin Twisters, the two face down cards. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, sorry. So that he sees everything. Um, no, this is kind of cool. He might turn this around with Purgatrio. I don't know. The Masterpiece hasn't been used this turn, though, has it? Uh, oh, you're right. It hasn't. <laughs> no, he's just going to get decimated by Masterpiece. As, uh, <laughs> <laughs> does whatever a Masterpiece it does. Uh, yeah, so, uh, Magical Meltdown goes down with one of the Fallen Spell cards on Rary's Field. Purgatrio's up next. Michael Forner's defiant uh, last stand. Yeah, worth a shot. <laughs> Giant screeching ghouls. Uh, unfortunately, I don't, not going to be enough to get him there. It does threaten all of Burberry's monsters, but Masterpiece is uh, the proud protector. He just and holds up his shield and the light burns and away. That's it. Yeah, <laughs> Her trio's destroyed. Co Cosmic Cyclone certainly won't help with 50 life points left. <sighs> and that's the match. Third place, Marcello Barberi from Italy, taking uh, one of the highest slots in the World Championships for this year. Wow, for an incredibly tough field as well. A strong performance from Michael uh, Forner as well, who took fourth place for Italy. Yeah, it, very good good year for Italy um, in, the, in the main event. Um, those were the last two European players, uh, so uh, we're out as well now, like uh, you guys were <laughs> as well. Um, yeah, they, both these guys should be really proud. They played very, very well this weekend, and congratulations to them. I imagine at this point, you just kind of feel relieved that it's kind of like the stress is over. I know, yeah. like, sort of when you... Uh, yeah, it's, it's always disappointing to lose, but uh, at the same time, competing in the World Championship is surprisingly stressful. Yeah, I mean, was that something for you when uh, you got to the end of day one uh, to come back to play for day two, and you're like feeling stressed the next day and you spend the whole night worrying about well, it? Well, I got 10th place, so I didn't make it to day two, oh, unfortunately. Man, sorry. Uh, <laughs> I should have asked before we went on air and I asked that question. Yeah, sorry. I, I, I had a 3-2 record and got uh, 10th place. Um, but I had an awesome time in Japan. Regardless, when I competed in the World Championship, it was actually in 2009 in Tokyo. I stayed at the same hotel I was at this weekend. So it was a crazy experience for me this weekend, um, reminiscing about my time c as a competitor here. Um, and it, it's such an experience to actually be invited to compete in this tournament. I remember it was now eight years ago. I remember it was like it was like it was yesterday. Wow, <laughs> time flies. <laughs> so uh, I suspect all of the competitors in this weekend's tournament is having an experience they will never forget, uh, and that is the true prize of the World Championship qualifier. Yeah, this is just such a we've got such an exclusive stage for this tournament that. From all the players, so so few of them will ever even set foot on this stage, let alone more than once. So you've kind of got to take it in. But saying that, we did have repeat uh, appearances from at least two of the competitors that I'm aware it, of. It does happen when uh, strong duelists remain dedicated to the game; they repeat success. Uh, yeah, just keep uh, keep at it, guys. I guess, and you can get on the stage. I've actually never played the World Championship myself. Uh, had a pretty good run at regionals uh, a long, long time ago. Um, but yeah, time flies. Actually, one of the funniest things we used to have is uh, the intro videos you might remember from previous World Championships. Uh, one of the things you could see is uh, they showed all the locate. They used to show all the locations that we'd previously done it. But the problem was that video was getting exceptionally long at this point. <laughs> uh, but you could just see all of our, all of my colleagues and all of us sort of. Uh, you can see as we've joined the company when we're young, and you can just slowly see us getting older through this little montage yeah. of videos. Yeah, I, I was 19 when I first competed. Wow, really? Yeah. It's just. Uh, it's just incredible that this, we've had this tradition going on for so long, yeah. and uh, it still has the same magic to these players. It, and it does, and it's just the culmination of an entire year of tournaments. Yeah, it's a great way to send it off and say, hey, this is this is the end of the season, guys. Uh, we're going to bring you to a location. We're going to throw down with the best guys. And 
it's not even just the stuff you see on screen that's super cool for the players. It's all the way they get to hang out, the tours and stuff. Yes. Um, a lot of people, uh, they, they try to avoid playing games like against each other because they don't really want to reveal how good they are or what their decks are. So they actually spend a lot more time talking about yeah, other stuff. Yeah, hanging out. It's, it's, it's actually, it's very, even though it's so competitive, it's very friendly between players. Yes. Uh, well, that brings us to the end of this round. Uh, we're going to be back very soon, and I believe we're either going to have the Duel Links final or the Dragon Duel final next. So please stay with us. We hope you're enjoying the show, and we'll see you soon.